Hi there. I'm Sam Norgard, and I've created the Companion Lesson Series to provide informative sessions on my view of some of what is happening in the world of beads. This is session one, companion video called Get to Know Sam. Watch it while you bead the warped squares for the Black and White Together project, or just enjoy it. Please send us as many squares as you can. Today is session one, Get to Know Sam, and it is about my work. So I'm going to share my screen. And it looks like we're up now. And I'm calling this Sam Norgard Likes Ideas. And uh, it's a true story. So it's a bit of my background on how one idea as an artist leads to another. Here are a few pieces from the past to share my evolution as an artist and a little bit of how I became a beatist. This is a black and white drawing and I thought I'd start with it as a kind of shout out to our black and white together project. Here you see a desert established through um, these cactus forms and then these tents and these kind of crazy looking rabbits running through. These drawings often informed sculptures and you can see what happened as I turned those drawings into sculptural forms. During this time, I made many pieces um, that had a similar design context where you saw repetition and movement created. Um, here is a second one. It's about uh, 15 feet across. This is in my loft in Philadelphia in the early years. And it's about five feet high. These are hung, um, the pheasants in the back are hung at about five feet. They're all um, wood that I cut out us using a bandsaw. Um, and then hand painted uh, to, to create the final piece. You can see here some of the detail of that work and you can already see some of the love of repetition that I'm able to enjoy as I've um, moved into beads. These are patterns. I, I often work between 2D, 3D and 4D and one idea from one dimension uh, informs or uh, leads me to um, the next the next idea. So these were patterns that um, were two dimensional images, obviously, and then became patterns for three dimensional work. Again, you know, cutting these forms out of wood and using that repeated form, but then variety in terms of how the um, various ores here are patterned. They became part of a piece here which uh, you can tell the scale of the piece because this is a life-size chair. And um, this is a piece that was hung in Hong Kong um, at the Savannah College of Art and Design. So uh, you can see an interest of moving from flat, flat surface 2D work into 3D work into these pieces that I considered installation pieces. Um, more uh, and these went on to more ideas where the ores become these kind of house forms. This is at the Philadelphia Art Institute. Um, and uh, I thought it was a really fun um, place to install because of um, the, the very beautiful columns and the marble floors. And then my images that look a little bit more like Wilma Flintstone did them. Um, it has a great contrast with the architectural space. Uh, Sculptural work ideas um, eventually started to influence uh, performance work that I did. Here you see uh, a, a seesaw um, created with uh, an image that actually refers to a self-portrait. And it's a bit about you know, balancing life's ups and downs. Um, and here you see that moving into some of the performance work I've been involved in. This is a piece by Jan Lowenstein done at the Painted Bride. Um, and here Dan is using that uh, very long kind of seesaw here, which actually did go up and down. So here you see my opportunity to be involved in some of those um, three-dimensional sculptural forms of a seesaw moving into a, a four-dimensional experience um, in uh, not only an installation, but a performance. 
a, a little bit more about some of my performance work. That's a much younger me there on the right and Franz Spohn on the left. And we're using a couch that Dan Lowenstein built um, in this performance, talking about the ups and downs of relationships. Um, moving on, I wanted to show you some of the line work that I've done. Um, the, these were uh, welded by Amy Jones, um, uh, now Amy Tipple, and uh, they're called um, the Philadelphia series, kind of um, relating to a group of very close friends I had in Philadelphia and how our, our gatherings often made us very much um, feel a family. And here you have that family of forms. Moving from lines to twigs, we see that um, the, the line now interpreted as a twig uh, becomes a, a, new, a, a new idea and starts to speak um, in a kind of humble way about nature. Um, here then, those twigs become vines and the topiary, uh, uh, the dress form is turned into, into a, a, a living form. Um, a, a topiary. Um, I, I evolved that image, the dress image, over about 15 to 20 years now, working with perishable constructions. Um, these were actually uh, after my, my father had passed away and I was uh, looking to express kind of the perishable nature and to be able to adjust to the change um, that had happened in my life. So there's actually a hundred, uh, more than a hundred of these, and don't worry, I'm not going to make you look at them all, um, but I thought you could see just a, a, a couple of these, these forms. Um, the one on the left are sea pods, um, and then the one on the right actually are fish bones that the sea had cleaned and then washed up. Um, uh, it's interesting working in a place, um, my summer studio is in my home in Nova Scotia, and um, I, I love to work on the beach there. Um, it kind of combines two loves, being able to be outside in nature, and then um, my love of making art. Um, I also don't have to clean up after myself. <laughs> Mother Nature does that for me. Um, and let's see what's next. Okay, the, the perishable pieces then I became interested in making them in 3D form. This is a piece done out of, it's called the 300 bagels, Bagel Dress, and I, I think you can see what it's out of. Um, so now beads. Um, th this is a very important piece to me in, in my um, relationship to beads. Uh, it, it gave me an opportunity to create a form that was large. You know, mostly beads, um, you know, we create kind of smaller pieces, or I do, you know, jewelry. And uh, in this particular piece, um, it, it's not a wearable dress. Some people think these are wearable dresses, but it is a, a work that um, that is mounted on a welded steel frame, much like the lines of steel and uh, lines of steel dresses I showed you earlier. And uh, then this is covered with thousands of um, beaded forms. Uh, French, French bead flower technique um, was part of my process. It's called Liza and the Coat of Art, and it's named in honor of Liza Liu, one of my favorite bead artists. And uh, believe it or not, my dad's name was Art. And um, yeah, he taught me um, constructions for, for florist work. He was, he was a florist. And uh, the, the way that the form is built is um, based on those um, processes and techniques that he taught me in the flower store of my childhood. So this, this form is Liza and the Code of Art, um, kind of dedicating it to two, two important people. Um, here, here we have uh, one of my first attempts at doing some community work, and I had a wonderful group of women in Wisconsin who, um, who I would teach different techniques to, and then we would make that repeated form, and then my challenge was to put it into um, a unified piece of art. So this is called uh, Liza, uh, I'm sorry, this is called um, Fan of Frida's. 
developing technique and skill in bead embroidery. So uh, th this is an, another work that is um, a collaboration. The, the center image here is by a fellow colleague, um, Stephen, and Stephen um, creates these gorgeous painted, they're actually not painted, they're, they're done in, in hot, um, hot glass, and then I uh, did all the bead work that um, was inspired by uh, his, his piece there in the center. Um, a couple more of um, my beaded uh, necklace pieces. Um, one of the things I've tried to do is school myself in uh, a, a number of techniques so that I have those techniques at the ready, um, both for teaching, I'd love to teach, and for um, solving problems with, within my own work. Uh, studying design, uh, being a designer, I often refer to myself as a de designologist, and yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a word, but um, uh, you know, working with design and art is a lot about problem solving and letting yourself face problems and figure out um, how to solve and resolve your work. Um, this is a, a, an installation piece. It's um, a piece I did to celebrate the Savannah College of Art and Design's 30th anniversary. And I actually think of these as, as beads. All of these forms are covered in small folded paper pieces that are pinned to the surface. So you make the hole, there's the bead. Um, and the, the paper was um, uh, kind of taken from the, the what, what would have been trash and um, they were announcements for previous artist shows and works at the Savannah College of Art and Design. So um, I, I felt like I was kind of honoring the people in those shows, but also uh, standing on the shoulders of these wonderful artists um, who are providing the color and texture for, for this piece. Um, it, it is uh, 30 feet long and um, is creative out of 30 different forms that are forms that I, um, I abstracted from natural forms in Savannah. Um, th this is a piece I did in Lacoste, France, and uh, it, it kind of took me back to the possibilities of perishables. It, it's a piece that, um, that honors women's work or domestic work. Um, a, a lot of work by women is handwork that was done for the home. So this kind of looks at uh, the um, hooked rugs um, that, that uh, I, I still am exposed to through my home in Nova Scotia. Um, a lot of outdoor pieces are uh, a bit male oriented and I just wanted to kind of honor some of the, the work done by women. Um, and here you can see uh, just before the opening um, what that looked like uh, from above. Um, now I'd like to show you a few pieces that are a little bit more recent. This is called Synchronicity, and I'm transferring my ideas of the found perishable pieces to use of found objects. So instead of wandering the beaches and uh, finding um, the seaweed or flowers to build the dresses with, I'm actually combing secondhand stores and casts off um, for found objects that then come together um, in these works. Here you can see a little bit of a close-up. Uh, you can see that I'm, I'm looking for found value and color and that uh, some of the content that then comes through the materials is this kind of honoring of standing on the shoulders of many women who came before me. Um, Here's another piece called Perseverance. And in this piece, you can actually see the scallop shells that are used to create the skirt. I think they're a little more hidden in the previous black and white piece. But um, here you can see I, I kind of became the upholsterer of um, scallop shells. Here's a little close up. 
I do tend to favor a very active, busy surface. Um, I think that is another thing that led me to beading is because you can put so much into a, a, a really small space. It's quite exciting. And I often um, see the, the small beaded pieces that I'm making as a, a, actually a very large world. Um, this is called Mother Belly. And again, you can see the use of the scallop shells here that were gathered from my beaches. And then um, those are covered with found fabrics, found buttons. And this piece was a very special find. And I, I, I purchased it from a woman and she told me that her mother had made the piece but had never really completed or had it framed. And uh, later that, that person, whose name is Tracy, um, became an important person to me as well. And so I, I kind of just love that, that this has been placed in um, my most honored space, which is uh, art. So um, my attentions moved back to community-based projects, which is part of my desire to do the Black and White Together project with you all. And um, uh, as, as Tana would say, uh, I'm focusing on beating with a purpose. The stories of the um, piece, Butterflies in My Skirt, How'd They Get There, is something I'd like to share. So I designed Izetta and three, I guess I can't spell three, three wonderful students took Izetta to, um, and, and my teachings, to the Dominican Republic. Here you see Tana modeling Izetta. Um, Izetta is a beaded butterfly brooch, which um, made, made her way to the Dominican Republic and uh, was the basis for my students teaching um, parts of this project. Here you can see the butterfly uh, project being taught to the Bate girls. Um, this, this process of teaching them how to make beaded jewelry uh, has moved on to help them sustain themselves. This group of women had been sex traded and uh, other um, terrible parts from their past. And uh, through um, this, this group of women, which I became part of, we, um, we have been able to offer them skills and um, ways to process ideas and to learn about uh, jewelry and, and their work is now sold. These um, butterfly pieces you see them making became part of uh, the piece that was also created with this group. This is the Coastal Bead Society and the Hilton Head Bead Society who are at work on the forms for the skirt for this dress that is part of um, the butterfly dress. Here you can see some of what I was teaching that group. Um, I like to kind of trade my teaching um, and give it for free and then um, have students give back to me in the form of beaded elements, much like I'm trying to do with the Black and White Together project where um, I will teach you how to make the black and white forms and pattern. I'll give you a little of what I know about design and the use of value and you'll send on to me um, some of those forms that you bead. And then my team and I will assemble those pieces into a final form. Of course, we don't really know what that's going to be because we don't know how many we'll get. So surprise us and send a lot. These are some of the, the forms that I taught for the butterfly skirt. And here you can see that piece completed uh, in the image on the right. So the title is Butterflies in My Skirt, How They Get There. And I, I like the idea of a title kind of intriguing the viewer to think a little bit more about um, what this piece might be about. Um, moving on, I've done other community small works. Uh, this is called the Butterfly Net. I was teaching brick stitch. Uh, uh, you can see some of the um, butterfly pieces on the left. And then the final form is on the right. Um, which is the, the butterfly net. 
Um, I did the same process with um, beaters from uh, two different bead societies. And this is called Starnet for Cynthia, in which um, we uh, taught um, color, color ideas. We had Deb Mosh come in, who is an uh, expert on color and a great book by, by her, if, if you're interested. Um, it's called Color, A Love Story. And uh, I, I taught uh, this while Deb talked with um, the individual makers about how to select color. And then you can see them learning how to make the warp squares that come together to make these stars. And uh, ultimately this was um, put into one connected piece, which I did called Starnet. Uh, here are some other pieces, water cycle bracelets. I was teaching triangles to a group and then we could see how the triangles come together to create uh, tetrads. Then the tetrads come together to create this um, linkage which turns and shows the various patterns in the piece. This is part of um, what I've grown to know about through Kate McKinnon and the Contemporary Geometric Beadwork, which is an amazing group and they have so um, uh, generously filled um, my head with ideas and my, my fingers with delight. Um, here's another uh, piece that's actually um, four views of the same piece. These are called kaleidocycles, and this piece was actually worn as a hat. Um, beading assistance was done by Carol Garrity and Tana Felicia Flagg, thank you so much. The, um, the patterns um, are uh, varied so that when it turns, um, you see these different patterns, and this was worn by um, Franklin in uh, Frank, my friend Franklin, in um, uh, a fashion show in Linz, Austria. Here's Hypernia's Reach, which is a collaboration with my dear colleague Don Peterson, and um, the Butterfly Gate, which now we were celebrating 40 years for SCAD's 40th. Um, and uh, you can see some of the butterflies here. There are 40 butterflies placed on the gate to um, kind of offer hope and inspiration as you would walk into the garden, the back 40. Here's a little close up. It's an experimentation uh, for Dawn and I with um, 3D printing. Um, and uh, we faced many challenges during this and I, I can't thank John enough for sticking by my side as we got this piece finished. Uh, Loving beads so much that I made a, a bead retreat center um, uh, called the Yellow Door Center in Nova Scotia. This is the schoolhouse. I, I moved the schoolhouse to our property um, and it, it provides uh, uh, a, a getaway for um, beaters from around the world to meet and to exchange ideas and to um, to share share time and space together. Uh, here's my one of my small groups that came in 2019. On the left, you see the inside of um, the schoolhouse, and on the right, some of the wonderful people who were there. Um, we, we shuttered everything for 2020 with the coronavirus. So we're hoping that maybe 2021 will offer us the opportunity to revisit. Um, this is one of the houses that is part of the Yellow Door. And uh, this is where students stay. Um, uh, we have kind of a, a, a guest mom there, um, Rosa Kennedy, who helps with, um, with oh, just, just everything. Um, and uh, this is the other cottage where students stay. And in between these two residences um, is, uh, is the schoolhouse. So this is a, a dream I've been building for, I guess it's 20 years now. Um, and it, it's, it's really starting to come to, to fruition. Uh, I hope maybe some of you will join us. Um, this, is a, a <laughs> this is one of my crazy ideas. This is our, our house, um, our recent house that Charles and Rosa helped me uh, obtain. And you can see 
on the left here, we, we took a, a, a chainsaw and just cut off this shed that was attached to the house and turned it around and here it is here. And then um, I found a lot of glass windows um, along the road and, and uh, um, my, my team of carpenters there also provided many of these windows and many of these ideas on how to fit everything together. But uh, I'm hoping that I will be able to uh, make this as the place for our teachers to stay so that they can get away a little bit from um, from the hecticness of teaching, have their own space, and then um, we, we can come together there once again. So we, we hope that you might consider uh, creating or coming to a group retreat at the, at the Yellow Door Center. Um, this is the boardwalk between the houses. This would lead the teacher from their uh, residence in that, that house we fondly call the Goblin House. And you'd walk down um, down this boardwalk to the beach and then along the beach to the cottages and the schoolhouse. So a very influential person and the whole group in my development is Kate McKinnon and the, I call it the empire of contemporary geometric beadwork. I have had the pleasure of meeting with these folks at MIT, where we share information with mathematicians, architects, scientists. Um, we, we have also met in Arizona, in Barcelona. And here on, on the left is Claudia and Franklin. And this is one of the ways we work. We come, come together and share the new forms that we've made, like the pieces on the right which are exciting geometric forms, which can represent everything from space station ideas to collapsible umbrellas uh, to art and design. Um, here's a game by Claudia. It's just beautiful, it's just beautiful. Th these people are very special people who so graciously just give over their ideas to each other and to the world. Here on the left is another shot of um, our table. Notice there's coffee, I, I like coffee. And on the right is Ursula and Kate uh, out to lunch. And obviously um, we have a photograph witnessing expressing and listening and uh, uh, just a shout out and a thank you to that group for all they've given to me. Um, re recently, I've done some COVID brooches. Uh, uh, it's the lover's eye. So it's these are kind of from the heart. Um, uh, and my current attention is on our project, Black and White Together. You know, I'm hoping that you will join us in, um, in this endeavor to make this large scale piece. And I'd like to thank uh, Carol and to Dawn for the different patterns they've put their heart and time into. Um, the one you see up right now is the series of squares designed by, uh, um, designed by myself and then the patterns are made by Dawn, my dear friend, Dawn Peterson. Um, with your participation, um, we will create one connected piece. So sometimes people will say, well, how can I help? How can I get involved? If you have questions, you can write to beatercarol at gmail.com. If you're a maker and you're making squares for us, send as many black and white squares as you wish. Of course, we'd, we'd love for you to learn from the, the patterns that we've set forth, and we'd love you to do that scale, um, the, the eight to 10 different patterns. But also, if you want to express yourself more individually and just use black and white to make um, the warp squares, we would love those as well. Uh, send as many as you wish to IBW, Black and White Together Project, 74 Baroni Lane, Hilton Head, South Carolina, 29928. Include the maker's name, email address, and country of origin. We'd like to keep records and be able to represent everyone who has been involved. Other ways you can help. Tell other beaters about us. 
know where to find the links to the project on the IBW website and tell others. Use our session posts and teach others how to make warp squares. Volunteer to help us assemble. We hope we'll have a lot and that we'll need some help. Thank you for your participation and your support. This is the end for now. And here's the information again on who to write with questions, or if you'd like to just connect with me, I am Karen Sam Norgard. You can connect with me at www.karensamnorgard.com. You can see some more of my jewelry, uh, or you can write to me at karensamnorgard at mac.com. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.